you could always fall back on the westerns. And uh, in fact, the first story I ever did for Stan was a western called The Man Who Wouldn't Die. And uh, it was a three-page filler for one of the western comics. And uh, from that time on, I've been with Stan ever since, 60, 68 years. And, uh, but of course, the, uh, at that time, as you know, in June 1950, the Korean War started. So naturally, we started doing a lot of war books. I did so many war books, we had so many titles, and of course, EC started it all. They, they put out some great books. They had some great artists, uh, John Severn and, and Wally Wood and, and, and people like that. So Stan tried to uh, duplicate what they were doing, and we, we turned out some good ones. We had, uh, well, we had Gene Colan did excellent work, and uh, uh, pe people like that. Uh, of course, later on when DC uh, folded, uh, John Severn came over and uh, did some work for, for Stan and uh, Al Williamson, people like that, that had worked for uh, EC. But uh, EC was one of the first comics to fold because of the uh, comics code, uh, which came out in the early 50s, naturally. But, uh, oh, we had so many good artists. I, 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 I forget uh, with Johnny Romita, for example, and... Uh, uh, Russ but, Heath, but, of course. Uh, well, Russ, he did some great westerns and great war stories. He did great covers. And uh, but my all-time favorite was John Severn. Uh, I thought he did the best. No one could do a western like he could or a, a war story. But John was not big on superheroes. But... Uh, he, he, he was so versatile, his humor. Look at all the crack magazine covers he did down through the years. And uh, I talked to him on the phone, but I never met him, never got to meet uh, John. Uh, one of my regrets. And uh, <laughs> of course, I knew his sister very well, Murray, and uh, we did a lot of things together. Uh, Marie, she was a great... Ah, Marie Severn. A uh, great penciler. She had a great sense of humor. She was a great colorist. She was just a great all-around talent. And uh, she's not doing too well now physically, but, uh, you know, we all think a lot of her and uh, try to keep in touch with her. And, uh, <clears throat> but she's, she's been with Stan a long time, too. Uh, I think, well, well, I know that I've been with Stan longer than anybody else. Johnny Romita came, uh, he came over from D.C. where he was doing a lot of romance books, and he did great romance books, of course. And he came over uh, probably in the early 60s, and the same way with John uh, Buscema the greatest uh, uh, talent in comics as far as being a draftsman. He, no one could draw like John Buscema. And uh, of course, his, his Conan and, and Tarzan, and he, even he hated superheroes, but he, uh, he did great stories on Thor, the Fantastic Four, and uh, and he and I worked together for many years, and some of my best stuff I feel was when I did work for uh, or with, uh, like I said, John Buscema. Uh, I can't say enough about him. And of course, Kirby, he was the king of comics, and he uh, he was really a cartoonist, whereas Buscema was an illustrator. But uh, Jack was, he was a great cartoonist and he, uh, 
Nobody could tell a story like he could. He, especially his fantasy type work, as we all, as we all know, his Fantastic Four changed the whole uh, direction of comics in the 1960s, and uh, it's amazing if if you look at the the volume of work that that Jack did. Of course, Jack, I don't well he. He didn't ink. I'm not. I'm not saying he couldn't ink, but his work was not the same when he inked it. But he was a beautiful penciler, and uh, I never had a bit of problems with any of his stuff. Once in a great while, with any any penciler, you had to uh, uh, help them along a little bit because. Uh, there were there were inkers and there were inkers. Some inkers like Frank Joy Coyle <clears throat> was a, uh, a great penciler, so he often helped. Some of the uh, uh, Stan used to give Frank and myself and and Tom Palmer people like that uh, young artists that were just coming into the field. Uh, Rich Buckler, for example. And, uh, Jim Starlin, and the stand would, uh, he knew that we could pick them up because we were, we were old timers that had been pencilers ourselves uh, in the uh, 40s and 50s. So uh, <clears throat> Stan knew how to uh, juggle his artists and uh, look, look, look at all the great books he turned out. Well, when I started with Stan, like I said, 1950, I did my own pencils and inks right up until about 1962. So in other words, for 12 years I did nothing but my own pencils and I inked my own work. There were westerns, war stories, science fiction, romance, uh, the whole bit. and. Uh, like I said, in six, early 60s, Jack Kirby, Kirby came over to, D, to Marvel, and we were time, still timing then, and we might have gone to Atlas at that time. And uh, he, he couldn't get, us, couldn't get uh, anyone to ink Jack's uh, story. And it was a monster book, I, I th believe. And, uh, he called me up. He said, "Joe, could you squeeze a story, story, and it's a short story by Jack Kirby." And, uh, and so I told him I, <clears throat> that I could. So I inked Kirby's, and he liked the combination of me ink and Kirby. And there were times when I would pick up Jack a little bit. There were certain things. Every artist has a uh, his. Uh, uh, problems with art, D doesn't matter who it is. And uh, so I, there were certain things Kirby did that I felt I could improve upon. And uh, of course, looking back, I often say to myself, you know, maybe I, I changed too much of Kirby's art, but then I got back on the track and tried to ink him just the way Jack penciled his stories. Because he was a great penciler, no yes. question.